us. Um, I'm really, really pleased to uh, introduce Victoria Dalash, who has 10 years of software and security engineering experience. She's a writer, a speaker, a YouTuber, an avid attendee of various conferences of late. So if you've not bumped into her recently, I'm sure you will at some point at a live event. Today, we're going to be talking about a really exciting topic. It's going to be how to build bridges between security and product teams. Um, I'm not going to bore anybody too much with uh, anything uh, more about me. Uh, I will let Victoria introduce herself in just a moment. Just a quick reminder that any comments, um, questions, please do get involved. Um, during the course of the uh, webinar and put them in the text box. We are uh, constrained by time today. So we'll do our very, very best at the very end to answer as many questions as we can. Uh, any that we can't answer live, we will um, do our very best to get those answers to you uh, in, in an email or a LinkedIn message. Um, any format is, is absolutely fine for you to send them across. But without further ado, I will hand it over to Victoria. Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining. Uh, I have a very exciting topic for you today, uh, how to build bridges between security and product teams. But before I dive into it, uh, I need to set the context right. And to do that, I need to tell you more about myself. OK, so uh, I've been working in tech for a decade, mostly as a software engineer. And in the late uh, 2020, my brilliant engineering manager asked me if I would like to move teams. So at that time, I had been working for this company for over three years. And she, my engineering manager, thought that it would be beneficial to me uh, to grow in different uh, different areas. So she told me that I can choose whatever team I want. And I looked around and thought, hmm, if I just go to another product team, uh, I would be doing basically the same thing, building scalable APIs, but in a different technology. So I thought, hmm, security, it's something I've always been interested in but I hadn't had time to, to dive deep into it. So I said, how about security? Can I join the security team? And she said, yes, the uh, great uh, manager of security, security team uh, also said, yes, please join us. And this is how I started. So I've had this incredible opportunity to experience the same engineering organization from completely to uh, from uh, from completely different angles, right? As a, a software engineer first, and then as a security engineer. I so as you can calculate, I don't have like a decades of experience in security, and I don't claim that I have all the answers to all of your problems. But I, having had th that experience. I would like to share what I think is very valuable uh, and is missing in the relationship between product teams and security. I hope you're uh, okay with that. So let's go. Security is important. You can hear from a CTO, a VP of engineering, director of engineering, developers, whatever, like junior, senior, staff engineers, Security specialist says that security is important, but I hate to break it uh, to you, but this is the most useless sentence you can say about security. I used to say it a lot, but I decided to quit it. And I think it would be very good if we as the industry decided never use it again. Why? So the thing is that we all know that security is important as like humans. When you look at Maslow's hierarchy of needs, safety, so security of oneself, is like the second most base layer of the hierarchy or pyramid. 
right? We all understand that safety slash security, security is just safety of objects, that they are important, right? We, we, I, I don't think it's like a controversial statement by any means. Security is important to us as people. However, we transfer it to like engineering organizations and engineering organization hardly ever had they, uh, their core values defined. So I've worked for many um, engineering organizations. I maybe one had core values, but if you are in, a, in, in an engineering organization like that, that doesn't have like, oh, this is what we really care about. And this is what we really um, develop uh, develop with, like these are your, our values, then uh, security, uh, well, se security will be just like something what you bring to the table and ask people to, to do. But uh, there are so many other things that developers are focused on and must do take care, uh, take care of. And in this, uh, in the environments where security is not one of the core values, uh, it will be just very difficult to sub substantiate, uh, substantiate any security work or even quality work. Unfortunately, I will talk about it uh, a little bit more later. But here's the thing: uh, developers are busy. As you can see, this plate is really full and developers plates are full. They need to uh, design the solution of a problem. Uh, they need to test it. They need to uh, make sure that the code is uh, readable. It's usable, that um, um, that it's performant, that the, 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 it's optimized, accessible. You know, you have on this plate, like, look at it. I hope you're not hungry, by the way. There is some cheese and tomatoes. There is a sushi, some chicken, some other delicious things. And here you are bringing uh, your security spinach and say, hey, hey, please, this is important. Well, it's uh, it's very difficult to, and it's actually setting yourself, uh, set, setting the security for a failure. So why am I so obsessed uh, with telling you that the security is important sentence, although grammatically correct is actually so useless uh, because it's lacking the element that will inspire and motivate people to make room on their busy plates to put your security spinach. So the why is missing. So you can say that security is important for your organization, but you need to find the reason why security is so important for your organization. And the reasons can vary from we don't want to go to jail. This is why security is important to um, we are res feel responsible to our customers. This is why security is important. And I encourage you to spend a little time uh, in your security team and find this why find why security is important because this element this sentence so much richer with the reason security is important because something will inspire engineers uh, to make time for security it will be like oh this is our aspiration we want to be better engineers we want to care about security because that and this is not uh a concept that I invented uh, by any means. Uh, if you are in the internet, you probably heard about this person. Uh, his name is Simon Sinek, and he wrote this very short, easy read book, Start With Why. And he says that, well, we focus so much in, uh, we're focused so much on how and what uh, so how we do things and what do we do, but we don't, we lack this why in many organizations that lack this why, um, don't, don't grow to their full potential. Basically, um, you can read this book. It's very short read, as I said, or you can just listen to one of his podcasts when, when he, uh, where he explains this concept, it's really straightforward. 
And I, enc and I encourage you to find the why and repeat it over and over again to your engineers, to your organization, uh, so that it becomes like a part of nature of the organization, part of the values of the organization. Uh, I wish we had, uh, we, we had this approach in my previous company, uh, because I think this is like this inspiration, motivation uh, element is very important. Uh, because, well, security takes time and developers don't have it. Um, are you familiar with this image? This is a picture uh, from Wikipedia, uh, from an article about MVP, minimal viable products. And if you've been working for more startups, you probably are very familiar with this concept. But for those who maybe are not, I will just explain it shortly. So in my experience, I've, I've always worked for startups, very fast paced uh, organizations. And we all were in this, uh, well, religion of finding the MVP, minimal viable product. The idea is that the customer comes to you and says, hey, I would like a car. But instead of working on the car, which would be complicated and very long, you just go and dig deep into the essence of your customer's need. Excuse me. And you decide that the customer really doesn't uh, need a car, they just need some kind of means to uh, move faster. So instead of building the whole car, at first you build a skateboard. And after that, you iterate and you deliver a scooter and you and later you deliver the, the bike or you deliver and, and later after the bike, you deliver a, a, a motorcycle and after a motorcycle, finally a car. This is my everyday work life when I was uh, when I used to be a software engineer. The problem is that in uh, startups, this uh, very, uh, very energetic environments and organizations, you never get a chance to work on the bicycle. You sometimes get a chance to work on a scooter. And most of the time, you only have a one shot to deliver a skateboard. And why is it so important for you to understand? Well, it is very important for you to understand because developers are running against deadlines and time pressure all the time. So when you have like an, uh, when you focus on delivery and developers are focused on delivery, um, you only want to, I mean, you, you only have a chance to deliver the skateboard and security um, improvements, security features are, are very often considered the scooter release or a bike release. So you hardly ever as a developer have a chance to deliver something really good. It's scary to say, but it is true. And if you don't believe me, think about some um, some security issues that you have in your organization. Maybe, for example, there is, I don't know, some emailing system or confirmation system that uses, yes, tokens that expire and are unique. But at the same time, these tokens are never, um, oh, I forgot the word, uh, never run off the time, uh, uh, get never in, uh, never expire. This is the word I was looking for. They never expire because that, and why don't they ever expire? Because at some point developers decided that the expiration would be a scooter release or a bike release. Developers are always running against the time and security, as I said, takes the time.
this is why it's so important uh, that um, security needs to have like some kind of backup support, sponsorship, you name it, from the senior leadership. Um, because in the organizations, uh, th there are some organizations that are so focused on delivery and on uh, developers' velocity that security is always seen as a blocker and always seen as some as additional work. Um, so I'm saying that because I've got some very hard to heart talks with some uh, security specialists lately after conference talks, and and they said that it's. How can we achieve a success as a security team if we don't have time or if we're always running against the like product VP or engineering VPs? So it is like just to let you know that you need to have like your expectations uh, straight and fair to yourself. Like sometimes you without the support you. You won't be uh, you won't be able uh, simply to achieve everything you want and work on everything you want and implement every change that you think would be valuable. And when we talk about big changes, one of those big changes are uh, is undoubtedly shift security left. I guess all of us uh, know what shift security left is. But if not, just let me uh, say quickly that if you look at the timeline of a project, usually there are five, five phases, analysis, design, development, testing, and release maintenance. Um, and what happened often or used to happen before Shift Security Left appeared um, is that you would work on the project as a developer, you'd work on the project the last sprint comes and you're so excited for the release and then your engineering manager comes and she says hey how about we run this through the security just before the release and you there is this terrifying meeting uh, where security asks uh, security people ask questions about design everything and after this meeting you end up as a developer, you end up with a bunch of bugs that you've never heard of, like improvements, you have to change so much. And it's so stressful, horrible, and awful, really awful feeling. And I've been there uh, many times, so I know, trust me. So sec shift security left says, hmm, this is not good. Let's looking at the timeline shift security left, which means let's engage with security during the already analysis and mostly design phase of a project. So great. What we hear in presentations about security shift security left is we don't want to be blockers. We want to be enablers. And this is what security specialists say to a um, group of engineers. And the problem with it, uh, and look, I've, I, I've, I said, I've said these sentences many times and even on the pro product development all hands in front of all product and engineering people. And I said it like, we don't want to be blockers, we want to be enablers. I have a problem with this uh, statement now because it's selfish. It is to make our security team feel good about our work. But in the reality, the burden on shift or of shifting left is on developers' shoulders. Like they do the work. Of course, um, you assist them in shifting left, but most of the time, most of the work they do. So instead um, of, of talking about enablers and blockers, show benefits for the developers of that process. Because as a developer, and I will always stay as a developer at heart, I find shift security left 
incredibly useful. Incredibly useful. But there is too little space to talk about the benefits of it for devs, for people who create the software after at the end of the day. And the benefits are incredible. First of all, more confidence in the solution. Um, the changes that happen in the, uh, I don't know, thread modeling session, the, the, the security changes that are required happen on a piece of paper. So they're easy and basically stress-free. Uh, it takes much less time to, to fix something rather than fix a vulnerability. And uh, I don't know if you ever had a chance to actually fix a vulnerability, but as a software engineer, I had, and it's sometimes like a Pandora box, like opening a Pandora's box. I remember this one thing that we thought in the team that it would be changing just one line and how much changing line can take like 20 minutes with all the build and review and testing. But what happened was that it was one line, but we didn't know about all of the dependencies that already been in place on production. So it became this one vulnerability became like two weeks of work of several people. So shifting security to the left is brilliant because it basically is like time, like minus time, basically. And and when a developer does, uh, let's say, thread modeling, they develop security mindset and they become better engineers after, after the time, uh, after some time. And the, uh, the, the last benefit, but not the least important is that shifting security left decreases unnecessary stress before a release. And as I already told you, like developers are always running against this deadline and, and introducing more work to them just before this release is, is unfair. So shift security left helps to reduce the risk of that and creates more psychological safety, which is super important. Over the last 11 months, I've given a lot of talks and two talks that I uh, give the most often are uh, security doesn't have to be a nightmare where I share uh, the, the easiest tips on how to improve security of a product. And the other is great security is one question away. And in this uh, talk, I, in, in that talk, I explain a little piece of uh, security theory called the CIA triad and how it can be used as a framework for basically threat modeling. And I really love giving this talk. I get so much good questions and so much good feedback after it. And the conversations are sparkling, uh, sparking and <laughs> or maybe sparkling, who knows what happens. Um, I, I just like, I, I love like connecting with other developers to speak about uh, security. But what I um, get off, maybe often, yeah, I can say often, um, is a question that is a little bit driven by fear. And the question is like, why do you want to, why do you want us to have more work? Wouldn't it like, wouldn't threat modeling lead to more work? And as I, as we established already, developers really are str like struggling to, to, um, I mean, not maybe not struggling, but they have like very limited amount of time 
to deliver something usable, right? That's m minimal viable product. So when they think about threat modeling, they often think, hmm, okay, so we will find this uh, hole and this hole and this vulnerability here. We will never be able to, to fix all of it in six weeks. And six weeks is like average uh, project length in, in startups I used to work for. And when they see those problems, they really want to fix them and but they want to deliver. So it's like conflict of interest, right? And this is where I understood that we as um, security specialists should like educate people more about how security works, really, because one of the elements of, you know, modern security organization is that we have risk management, right? And the risk management is a beautiful idea to explain to developers because basically risk management tells them, hey, some risks are worth accepting. And there is a huge value in knowing about risks. And there is a huge value in seeing this, this holes and being able to prioritize later work. I think we need to, th there is a need, definitely there is a need for a talk or another webinar or presentation, you name it, about that, to explain it to uh, developers, that they don't have to be afraid of threat modeling, of finding more work, because we have like risk management. Um, because what if we don't do that as a community, if we don't explain it, if we don't show it, then the risk is um, that, well, we create, we will observe developers being like anxious about threat modeling or even avoidant because, hmm, if we never talk about security, then there are no problems, right? Hmm. Well, let's, it's for you to judge which, which, which posture, which security approach you would like to see in your engineering organization. These were uh, the biggest ideas or, or the core ideas I wanted to share with you. But I have some smaller ideas um, that you may find interesting. So first of all, when you want to create you know, this bridge and collaboration with, uh, with product teams be easy to find, uh, have a Slack channel that is not private, that is public, then people can ask questions. Um, we used to have, I mean, at my previous job, we had, um, a meeting called power hour for teams, uh, every day from Monday to Thursday at 11 AM, everyone could join and ask a question. Uh, about their, uh, about the uh, vulnerability they need to fix or about, uh, or do review of design, whatever they needed, they could do it. And we were always there. When you are set, uh, when you are trying to, to present new security idea, new change in the process to make it more secure, etc. Focus on the um, uh, focus on the benefits for devs. It is very important for them to understand the why, and to understand that they will benefit like benefit from it. So uh, there are some organizations, for example, I already talked about it um, when I talked about shift uh, shift left. But another example would be there are some organizations that are basically obsessed about this uh, dev development velocity and, for example, build time, right? So if you are a security engineer and you want to add a SAST scanner, it will add time to the build, right? But on the other end, it's like, oh, no, we cannot do it. Scarcity, scarcity mindset. But on the other hand, you can say, well, it, it, yeah, it's true that it will add the 
the time to the build, but on the other hand, it will help uh, with the code reviews. Now you maybe don't have to focus so much on finding vulnerabilities, security vulnerabilities. You can focus on the design, architecture, the code itself, uh, and the scanner will do some part of work for you. And I, as a developer, I would be very intrigued uh, to try it out and to use those scanners. This is an idea I have, and I'm very excited about it. I, um, I couldn't test it out myself because in my previous company, we didn't have QA engineers and in the, my next, um, next, uh, uh, next job, I will be doing something completely different. But if you're interested, let me know because I would love to help with running this experiment. So hear me out. Security champions program. Probably everyone knows about it, but the idea is that you have in each of product teams, you have a person who is a security champion, a person who's passionate or just interested in security. And this person represents you, the security during meetings, right? So, um, they bring the security angle to, I don't know, design session uh, or like decision making session, whatever. And in my previous company, uh, we focus very much on the developers because there were no QAs. But I think it would be just so brilliant to run an experiment with security champions developers, but also QA engineers, because QA engineers are just natural allies for security engineers, I think. Uh, and they have already the right mindset, the mindset that developers will never really have, because QA engineers have the mindset of how can we break things. So imagine you already have the, the right person. You just add some skills. You train them how to, I don't know, use burp suite or how to, how to exploit some, some vulnerabilities and they can do that. It, I think it can be absolutely brilliant. And if you in your organization have, uh, QA testers, try it for like three months and let me know. Or let me know earlier and I will give you more suggestions or ideas I have. I think it can be a, a super cool. I'm very excited about it. And <clears throat> uh, I'm still excited about this QA engineers. Like honestly, write to me if you, if you, if you have any in your organization, because this can be so cool. Okay, but the last thing almost, oh, I don't want to run out of time. Um, but uh, okay, so not like last two points. Don't take your knowledge for granted. Uh, really, people don't know enough, like uh, developers don't know enough about security. I have bachelor's and master's degree in human computer interaction. And it's it was this modern program, com uh, um, computer science and linguistics combined to create to create uh, people who are very fluent in web technologies. And I learned like you know, PHP, Python, uh, Ruby on Rails, some other, excuse me. Mm, programming languages, very cool program. I didn't even have one hour about security, even one hour over five years. And my friends who studied uh, computer science, they hardly ever had like 15 hours of cybersecurity. Come on. So, so I know that be, uh, you may think that, oh, this is obvious shift security left, obvious, uh, risk management, obvious how to, what, uh, cross site scripting is obvious, but in reality, 
there is uh, th this knowledge is not so widely spread as we wished it were. So maybe create some kind of um, for your security champions and other people, uh, some kind of trainings, some kind of presentations um, to explain and show what security really what what the th vulnerabilities are obviously but also what security is and what kind of processes you have because of course you may say oh we can we have the uh, policy that explains what risk management is risk management policy or whatever it's called but probably something like that but people don't have time to read it or even don't know how to find it so don't take your knowledge for for granted And the last point that I want to stress uh, to create like, you know, collaborative and open environment, make kindness part of your practice. When I think about my software development experience and my and various organizations I worked for, I maybe had contact with between 12 and 15 people who worked in security. And I felt comfortable only talking to four of them. And I, at some point after some snarky comments and, uh, or even rude answers, I stopped asking questions. And how do you think? Was I as a junior, software engineer back then, was I able, was I knowledgeable enough to make the right decision when it came to security? I don't think so. If you are a software engineer and you work with an engineering organization and you don't get any questions from engineers, that's a problem. So may, whatever basic the question is, be kind, because the worst thing is like no questions at all. And the fact that people are concerned and are, um, are cautious about security means that they care and don't bully that in them. Be kind. And I think this is basically everything what I wanted to share with you uh, today. Uh, I'm very grateful for this opportunity and uh, thank you for listening. Uh, I hope we connect on LinkedIn. You can also check out my website because uh, I sometimes write about security as well. And that's it. Are there any questions? So thank you very, very much, Victoria. Uh, really, really insightful. We are a little bit short on time. I've had some um, questions noted down which have come through on a uh, private message. Please feel free to put in the comment section. We, we won't have time to answer all of them. Um, one question um, coming from a development background, how do developers see the security team? How developers see security team? Uh, well, sometimes uh, it, it, it depends on the security team, I would say like, um, and it, it, it really depends on your communication style. If you just come to the room and say, uh, this is what you need to do without giving any reason, um, then of course there will be like a um, need for a or urge to, to, to organize a myham. Uh, from the developer's side. So I would encourage you to, um, yeah, to find a why and be very candid about it. And yeah, like uh, try to try to be collaborative and find a common ground with your uh, developers. But it is a very, uh, I, I would like to know more details. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, why is security is important 
the worst statesman for security? Yeah, because um, because if you are lacking the why, it's just not inspiring at all. We understand security is important because we are human and for humans, security is important, but it doesn't work in the context of, uh, of you know, very high paced um, organization in which uh, seniority or senior management says that you need to deliver your project on time and this is the most important thing. And um, unfortunately in in uh, current economy, like investors expect uh, growth, they expect to see like new future all the time. And uh, modern companies uh, become more and more future factories rather than, you know, businesses. So yeah, so so this sentence alone, security is important will not inspire people to put this extra effort uh, and make the software secure. Okay, okay, thank you very much. So, um, thank you everybody who's still hung on. We are a little bit over time now. Um, we do have other questions, which I think we will uh, pass on to you directly, Victoria, um, for you to, to answer and maybe message directly, if that's okay. Um, sure, sure. But thank, thank you very, very, very much. Uh, really, really insightful. Um, do remember guys, we, we do um, encourage you guys to uh, send us topics if you are interested in a particular topic. We can um, always put on a, another live webinar or Q&A session of some format. But thank you everybody for who attended, who attended live. Anybody who um, isn't live, regardless, we will uh, provide the recording very, very, very shortly. So it'll, it'll stay on LinkedIn for a little while um, and it will be uploaded to our YouTube and it will then remain there forever. <laughs> so <laughs> thank you very much once again, Victoria. Um, yeah. And until the next time, thank you very much. Thank you, you for having me. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye.